With so many roadmaps possible and guides available, it seems to be a complicated and confusing field. Keeping this thing in mind, let's shed some light on becoming a web developer with these simple yet effective steps. Now, before we dive in, please don't miss out on checking our Great Learning Academy, a free platform wherein we have tons of courses available, both in English as well as in Hindi. The link is attached in the description. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on important updates. Now, before we dive into our steps, let's first try to understand who is a web developer. He is the guy who is responsible for proper functioning of your websites. He makes it in such a way that it is easy for us to navigate through the website. He can create complicated websites, but he has to keep this thing in mind that the, the person who is visiting his website must be in such a way that it attracts both beginner as well as advanced users. He can be working on client side scripting, server side scripting and database technology. With that being said, can I become a web developer is the thing that you might be thinking, right? If you have an undergraduate degree or a master's degree in mathematics and computer science, it is easy for you to switch to these roles. But even though if you're not having these uh, degrees, right, you can still attend boot camps and do certifications from Udacity or Udemy or even from the free platforms like YouTube. Now let's try to see some of the important facts. If you talk about web development, it is one of the well-paid jobs. According to Bureau of Labor Statistics, there will be 8% growth in the employment from the year 2009 to 2028. Although most of the companies have stopped their hiring or they are hiring on a much lower rate post COVID-19, many organizations rely on digital tools like they will be working from home. So they will be much dependent on their product. So there will not be, this will not affect the job opportunities that are out there. If you don't have any exposure to programming languages, right? Still, you can stand with the person who is having programming experience. It's not compulsory to have a computer science. There are people who are from different, different backgrounds like film industry, musicians, and they are from management. Still, they perform much better than the person who is having a computer science degree. So it is not necessary to have a computer science degree, but if it is there, it is good to have. Let's now see the types of web developer. You can become a full stack developer. You can be a front end developer or you can be a back end developer. So in this tutorial, what we are focusing on is full stack development. So this will cover both your front end and back end. Now it is up to you and your choice if you're interested in full stack or if you're interested in front end or interested in back end, you can pick one of them. If you're a person who is someone who likes programming languages and want to be the developer of that particular language like JavaScript developer, Python developer, that can be also done. Now let's talk about our first step. It is HTML. It stands for hypertext markup language. Hypertext is nothing but a link between web pages. As we all know, a website is nothing but a collection of web pages. What is markup? It is the text between the tags which defines a structure. So in nutshell, what is hypertext markup language? It is a language which is used to create web pages. It defines the structure of our web page. With that being said, now let's see what are the important things that we should know. We should know the basics of HTML. We should know forms and validations. We should know basic stuff of SEO that is search engine optimization. And we should also know what are the best practices and semantics of HTML. Once you are done with this, this is your first step completed. Now let's talk about our second step, which is CSS. CSS stands for cascading style sheets. Once your structure is there now, you have your house ready. Now what you're going to do, you're going to change its look and feel with the help of CSS. It is used to make our web pages more presentable and attractive. If you talk about this chronium, cascading means falling off styles. That means one style will have priority over the other. 
Style means that you are adding designs and sheets means that you're keeping in mind the separation of concerns. That means you will be writing your styles in a separate sheet. Now, what are the important things that you should know about CSS? First of all, you should know the basics of CSS and you should also know about the responsive designs, multimedia queries, and you should also know layouts like grids, flexbox. You should have a complete understanding of these things. Once you are done with this thing, and you should also know one of the best frameworks of CSS that is bootstrap. It is nothing, but it is like cutting and pasting it wherever you want. You should know what you want and directly implement it with the help of CDNs. Once you are done with this HTML and CSS, now try to create a static website, which includes only HTML and CSS. Now the third step is, and one of the most important steps is JavaScript. JavaScript is the verb of a web page. Now, if you talk about this verb, what is this? Whatever are the actions that you perform on a web page can be done with the help of JavaScript. It is an object oriented programming language, which uses just in time compiler, which is nothing, but it uses best of two worlds that is there, which is compiler and interpreter. It is installed in all the web browsers and its application range from web development, mobile development, and it is very easy and compatible with HTML and CSS. Now, if you talk about what are the things that you should know, you should know the basics of JavaScript that is there, the conditional statements, loops, how to declare variables and all those things. Once you are done with that, the next step is learning some of the advanced features like strict hoisting scope, fetching APIs, that is document object model. Once you are done with all these things, now the next thing is learning React.js. It is one of the best libraries of JavaScript that is React.js. It's backed by Facebook and it is currently on a boom. Now, once you are done with all these steps, the next step is without going any further to all the, all the steps that are there, you should stop and create websites based on what you have learned. That is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You try to clone websites, right? Try to clone simple, simple websites, and then try to increase the complexity of your websites. With this, the first three steps are done. Now let's talk about our fourth step, which is Node.js. Now you might be thinking why Node.js, right? So you might be someone who is interested or who is in love with Java and he wants to use Spring. That is up to you. You can use it. Or you can be someone who is in love with Python and he wants to use Django. You can use it. But Node.js is at its boom right now. It is the runtime environment that includes everything that you should that is there. Right. I'll repeat. It includes everything that is there to execute a JavaScript program. Earlier, JavaScript programs can be run only on the browser. With Node.js out there, you can run your JavaScript programs outside the browsers. You can act like a standalone applications. It acts like other scripting languages like Python and Java. You can read, delete files from the server and you can add, delete and modify data in the database. So everything that can be done with Python, Java and PHP can be done with Node.js. What are the things that you should know in Node.js? You should know the basics of Node.js. You should also have a good, decent idea about callbacks and events. You should also know how to connect database that is database connectivity. And you should also know web modules. Once you are done with this thing, you are a full stack developer. But now there is only one step left. That is the database. Now our fifth and final step is MongoDB. So this is a database that we are going to use as it is a document oriented database. Now earlier, what we used to do, we used to have relations, tables and all those things. And it could get earlier when our data is increased in terms of scalability. MongoDB is one of the best. It stores in such a way that it is easy for computers and also for humans. It provides scalability, fault tolerance and flexibility which is one of the key features of MongoDB. Now, what are the things that you should know in MongoDB is that you should know the basics of MongoDB, the crude that is create, read, a 
update and delete operations you should also know some of the basic commands that are there and and you should also know the connectivity how you can connect mongodb with node.js so now that we have covered all the five steps in order to become a web developer the final thing is there you should also have some kind of an idea about git and github and you should be able to work with repositories as well and also a little bit knowledge about bitbucket and if you want to deploy your website that you just created you can use docker or aws that's it guys congratulations you are now a web developer please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on important updates thank you